Welcome design students. In this lesson, I want to teach you how to pose a rigged 3D character. And in the process, you'll go from a neutral pose like this to a pose that says something about their personalities like this. Now, this is not totally finished. I haven't um, conformed her hand around his arm. I wanted to sort of be laying her arm on his hand instead of it being stiff like that. And same with the shoulder here. I just haven't got that far yet. When you download the file, this is what it will look like. Uh, you may have to retarget the textures, and I want to show you very quickly how to do that. You need to open the Scene Explorer here, and in here you will see the two main meshes. We have Spider, Gwen, and Flash. If you click the plus sign, you'll open it up the hierarchy, and if you, click for the, uh, if you click the plus sign for the geometry here, which is what that stands for, and click Render, you will see Body, and accessories. If we do the same for the Spider Gwen character, you will see body, mask, shoes, and hoodie. To retarget the textures, uh, you select one of these meshes, like body, and then you come over to the attributes editor and find the texture by clicking this arrow. And here you can see the material. Now here we is on the body material here, and then you'll just click the color swatch, click the folder, and then you'll have to navigate to the project folder, source images, and the textures will be in here. Make sure you choose the correct one that is indicated here. And when you choose that, everything else should retarget. If it doesn't, you may have to choose another mesh like accessories and do the same thing. So these characters have been rigged, and what that means is that they actually have a skeleton of bones inside them. And these control objects here are rigged such that you can select them and move them to manipulate the how their bodies move. You can rotate and move them. When you're playing around with the controls, just hit Command-Z to undo your movement and put them back to the uh, default position. Notice sometimes when you select a control object, sometimes the movement that you selected is grayed out. See, this thing cannot be moved here. That's because it is a rigged or a targeted controller. When you select something like this, and it can't be moved or rotated or scaled, you need to come over to the channel box and you will see here that there are controls here. These are called uh, targeted controls. And when you um, slide them, you'll see that you can move the hand using the controller instead of actually manipulating each finger. But you can also select one of these and notice scale is locked, movement is locked, but rotation is not and just manipulate each finger if you need to, like that. Now, when you're animating or posing, it's always helpful to be in local coordinates. So double click each tool and go into the settings and make sure that you are in object mode. That way your tool will follow the uh, orientation of the object you're rotating. I'm going to switch to wireframe mode for a second so you can see the skeleton inside here. Oops, can't see the skeleton. But no matter, these, those objects are probably just hidden somehow. But the way this works is that the bones are influencing the mesh and deforming it as they're moved and the bones are also linked to the control objects as well. I'll we'll switch back to shaded mode. Now the characters also have facial controls. If you click this and click the move tool for flash and slide this over, the facial controls will appear. And you can select them here. This would move the eyes left and right, up and down. This right here, if you select the outer box, the move the entire eyelid. If you just select one of the little boxes, it'll just move that portion of the eyelid. Same thing with the eyebrows. 
and then the master eyebrow control removes the whole thing. Same thing with the mouth and all of that. If you select this head controller in the back and select the rotate tool, that will move the entire head. If you pick up a foot like this and move it, the entire leg will follow. If you move it too far, then it may collapse. If it flips, then don't worry about it. You've just moved it too far. Some of these characters have some interesting uh, attributes. Gwen has a web shooter. See, this is her, this little thing shoots her web thing out that she shoots. And she also has an eye glow control. And if you select that and come over to the attributes editor, you can make her eyes glow more or less, like so. This controller down here is the master controller that moves the whole entire rig. Often you can scale the character down using this controller and that'll scale everything down, but apparently that's locked on this rig. This button here brings up all sorts of other controls in the, in the channel box. Um, you can switch from IK to FK. Those are two different types of animations. You can switch by arm. You can uh, turn on different layers. You can turn on different things over here. These are sort of master controller control uh, attributes, I would say. And each character has that. So before you start this process, what I would do is save this file and simply adding an attribute to this, like so, so that you have a clean file to go back to if you just get to a point where you need to start over again. So what I want you to do is explore the controls by just clicking on them and figuring out how they work. And then I want you to pose this ca these characters. You can pose one or both of them together in an action pose that says something about their personalities and what they do. If you need reference, then simply go to the internet and look for reference. Here are lots of different poses for a spider Gwen. So any of these would be acceptable. And then when you're done, I want you to set up the lighting like we do using Arnold. Put a skybox or something interesting in the background. You can find a texture of a city or, you know, whatever you're looking for and uh, set an interesting camera angle and make a really nice render and turn it in. If you need help with this assignment, simply ask your instructor. Otherwise, have fun and be creative. And I'll see you in the next video.